Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this part 2 video, we'll develop some basic functionalities in the C code of our kernel, like printing characters onto a display through the VGA buffer or something similar to that. So let's get started after a quick intro. Hey guys, so you might have noticed the changes I made to the assembly file after the last video. I've added in some comments for documentation purpose. It's actually a really good practice because after a while, when you look back into your code, you might not understand what you've done with the code, but with documentations like this, it becomes a lot clearer what you've done with your code. So I highly recommend that you use comments and documentations with every code you write. So in the last video, we completed our assembly code. And then in that code, we called the K main function, which has to be situated or located in the kernel.c file. But in order to call that function from the assembly file, that function has to actually exist in the kernel.c file. So I'm going to open up the kernel.c file and let's create that function. There's going to be a void kmain function. And this is actually a void function because we are not returning any value from this function. Once I enter this function, I don't want to come back unless I shut down. I don't want to return any values back. I only want to keep executing code within this main function. So it's going to be a void function. When we talk about an operating system, a very important aspect is the interaction with the user. The user requires some visual or audio representation or feedback in order to communicate with the operating system and know and get to know what's happening within it. So as a basic example, we could print out a hello world. We use the printf function provided by the C library and print out hello world. Do you think it's gonna work? No, it's not going to work because when you run C code on an operating system like on Linux, Windows or Mac, you call it a hosted environment where pre-built packages and libraries are available. The printf function, of course, it also is a part of that inbuilt packages. But when you're developing an operating system, you're not running C code on top of any operating system. This code itself is the operating system. So you don't get any pre-built packages or libraries to work with. You'll have to develop your own packages, your own libraries. In order to communicate with the display, get a visual representation or anything like that, you'll have to work your way out of it by yourself. You'll have to make your own libraries, own packages in order to get everything that you want to do in your operating system. So let's get start with the basic requirement, which is to get a visual representation. I want to use a display, print out a hello world at least. So let's see what we can do about that. So let's remove the printer function from here because we definitely cannot use that. So I'm just gonna leave our came in function untouched for now and then I'm gonna create another folder in this directory called include. And then in this directory, I'm gonna open up a terminal and create a new file called types of I mean called data types dot h. I can close this one for now. So now in my VS code, I get this folder here and it has the data types.h file here. Now the dot h is actually a header file for C files. So basically what I'm gonna do here is that since we don't have any pre-built data types, we'll have to create our own data types like integers, characters, strings, etc. So let's go ahead and create that. So the first thing I do while creating a header file is that make sure it remains either potent or in other words, we don't want this header file to be repeated or we don't want duplicate header files to be created when we import them like multiple times by accident or maybe while using header files indirectly. There's a chance there can be duplicate header files create a lot of complications. So I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen by using the if not defined command and creating a variable. I'm going to call it as data types and then if it's not defined then I'll have to define it and then finally we have to give it the end if command now anything you want to write in the header files should be written between this area so the objective of this file is to get a few data types so I'm going to use the type define function and create a signed character and it's going to be an int 8 
it. Similarly, I need an unsigned character as well. So it's going to be an unsigned in 8. Now I'll create the rest of the data types. I'm going to skip that part from the video. So I created a few other data types as well. So I created a signed character and an unsigned character. Those are 8 bit. Those are 8 bit data types. And I also created 16 bit data types and 32 bit data types as well as 64 bit data types. Next, let's create a string. And basically, a string is actually a character pointer. Let's call it string. So there you go, we created the main data types we require. Now we can use these data types by importing the data types.h header file into any C program that we want. Now our first goal here is to somehow print out at least a hello world onto a screen. And for that, I will create a header file that is going to control the VGA buffer and thereby put characters onto the screen. So inside the includes directory, I'm going to create another header file called screen. Now like the first header file that we created, the data types.h, the same convention goes here. We have to check using the if not defined command and create a variable. And then if it is not defined, let's define it. And then finally, the end if command. So now let's include the data types.h file so that we get to use those data types in our screen.h header file. First of all, let's declare a few variables. First variable I'm going to use is an integer 8 bit integer and it's called VGA row and I'm going to initialize it to 0. And the next variable is VGA column and I'm going to initialize that to 0 as well. Now next, let's declare a few constant variables which are unsigned integers of 8 bits and they are VG columns and it's initialized to 80 VGA rows it's 25 VGA depth which is 2 so basically we are going to use the VGA buffer provided by the x86 architecture to print out characters onto the screen by default we get 80 columns and 25 rows in the VGA buffer or in other words we can print 2000 numbers of characters at the same time on the screen and the VG depth is 2. It can be explained like this. Consider the screen as an excel sheet where each cell holds each character and each cell is further divided into two and the first half holds the foreground color and the background color of the character to be stored and the second half stores the character itself. So basically since there are 2000 characters that we can print we have 4000 different addresses and the odd numbers represent one half and the even numbers represent the second half. Now the next variable I'm going to declare is a string and it's called VGA buffer and its value is a string with a hexadecimal address and it is B8000. This is the VGA buffer address and the CPU uses this address to store the data or the characters to be displayed onto the screen. So by manipulating the data that is stored in this address, we can print characters onto the screen. So that's what we are going to do. So our first goal was to print out at least a hello world onto the screen. But let's start off by creating a simple function. I'm going to create a void function called put character that accepts a character which is what we want to print and then let's make use of that character print out a single character onto the screen so i'm going to type in vg buffer and in the most in the first place in the zero index i'm going to print out our character i'm going to be c and then the next index is going to be the color data of our character and i'm going to set it as 0x 0f basically this is a white text on black background so let's save it and see what we can do with it so let's go back to the kernel.c file and here i'm going to include the screen.h file which is inside include folder so we'll have to mention that it's an include folder and then we'll type in screen.h now we can access all the files and functions that are in screen.h so i'll be able to access the put character function from there and then we'll have to pass in a character so I'm going to pass in A. Let's see if this works. So in order for this kernel to work, we'll have to compile both the assembly file and the C file of our kernel and then use the linker 
and create a one single kernel.binary file. For that, we'll have to edit the linker.ld file. So let's open up the linker file. Now, the first thing we have to mention in the linker file is the entry point of our kernel and it is start. If you remember, we have the start label which is located inside the kernel.asm4 file and that is the starting point of our kernel. So we need to mention that. After that, we need to mention all the sections that we have. So before mentioning that, I'm going to offset our sections as one megabytes and then I will mention the dot text section. I'll first mention the multi boot header and the dot text section. After this, I'm going to mention the dot data section. Even though we haven't mentioned that there is a dot data section in our assembly code, just write it. And then comes the dot BSS section where we created our stack. So let's save this file. And now inside the main folder, let's create another file using touch. I'm creating a file called build.sh. So now I can close it. And inside my VS code, I'm going to edit this build.sh. We have to compile the kernel.assembly file using nasm and use gcc to compile the kernel.c file and use the linker to combine them into a single kernel file. And then we have to use kimu to emulate it. So running each of these commands again and again each time we want to test our new code is going to be really hard. So by creating such a file, we can execute all those instructions together and automate the process quite easily. So the first command that we want to execute is the nasm compilers command to convert or compile the assembly code of our kernel to an object file. And next, we will run the gcc command to convert the C code to an object file. And notice that we have used the freestanding flag to denote that we are expecting to run this on a freestanding environment. And next, and then we need the ld command to use the linker file to merge both the object files into a single kernel.binary file. And finally, I'm going to use the chemo emulator to emulate our operating system. And once our operating system reaches a minimum level, we could use the grub bootloader and create an ISO image file of our kernel, which can be run on any virtualization software like VirtualBox or VMware, or directly or can be directly run on your computer's hardware by creating a USB flash disk by burning our kernel onto the USB flash drive. So now let's open up our terminal and run the build.sh file. Okay, I guess we have an error. Hey guys, so I found one of the errors that I did. It's with the syntax of the assembly code. I kind of messed up the syntax here because I used the syntax used by the gas compiler, but we are using the NASM compiler and the syntax is a bit different. The register comes first and then comes the stack top. Actually, I also found one other error that I did is I used double code instead of single quotes because a double code refers to a string and we want to print a character and the function actually expects a character so we have to use single quotes so be careful of that so let's try running the build.sh file once again and if you would notice let's see we have printed that a here the first character on the screen is the a that we printed so we just close it again and let's try another character i'm going to print out b here Let's run the dot build function again. Here you go, you have B. So we successfully printed out a character onto the screen with our kernel. So when you actually run this on a hardware, you can print these characters onto your display, to your actual hardware display. Now a quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, like and share the video. And in the next video, we're gonna explore this more. We're gonna, we are gonna clear the screen and add more features more features and also control the cursor if you would notice here the cursor is blinking just below booting from room but we can actually control that but we can actually control the position and shape and characteristics of the cursor so we're going to control the cursor we're going to add more features we're going to add keyboard inputs to our kernel so stay tuned bye guys